This video is going to show the basics of how to make a hand-built goblet or chalice out of two pieces of clay that are pinched. I show the cleaning and refining and the joining of the two pieces and this is easy enough for any beginner to try. Making a hand-built goblet in two parts starts with two balls of clay. I first want to make sure that each piece is wedged. One part is going to be for the cup part. This is approximately a pound in size. So in ceramics one and two at my school, we start off with a pinch cup exercise early in the semester where they learn the basics of pinching. So we're revisiting this with creating a goblet. I always pinch the bottom first, so the bottom is pinched. I'm leaving it about as thick as a finger or a pinky, and then I rotate it and I go up the sides. When you are pinching, if you see any creasing, or if you see any big dents, any uh, kind of seams, make sure you blend over those immediately before they get too large. Now, this is just going to be pretty much a simple water goblet. If you wanted to say, add more height to this, okay? If I wanted to make a really tall one, I could add a coil and increase my height. So now I'm just pinching it up just a little bit more. I'm getting a little bit more height without adding a coil on this one. And I'm going just a tad bit smaller, a tad bit skinnier than a pinky. Okay, now this looks pretty good. You wanna make sure that it is round, okay? My students, I would recommend that you set this aside, turn it upside down on a wear board, and then allow it to dry. Usually 24 hours is adequate time for it to dry to get leather hard in our cabinets. Depending on how many pots are in the cabinet, you may have to uh, check the drying maybe with a, dry, with a dry towel rather than uncovered. Now for this, this is going to be the stem. Now the stem itself can be completely hollow. So as I do this, I'm just going to make a hole that's all the way through. One part of the stem is going to be skinnier and the other part is going to flare out. The flared out, the flared out part, of course, will be the part that it sits on because it has to have stability. So this is going to be the skinny part and as as I pinch it, I can take it and just gently squeeze it in. Now again, if you are squeezing and you see a seam, if you see um, a fold, immediately blend over that. You do not want to continue squeezing and create the fold or the dent to get bigger. Again, this is about pinky thick or maybe just a little bit less. Now I'm going to start pinching the bottom. And again, it's hollow. So this bottom part is the part that is going to flare out. Okay, so on the first day, while the clay is plastic, get the form just the way you want it. We'll get it leather hard and then we'll clean it. So if it looks crooked right now, it's going to be crooked later. So you wanna make sure that you are trying to check all of those angles to make sure it's looking just like you want it. Feel free to use a turntable so you can spin it. I am going to flare this upper part back out just a smidge as well. By flaring that out, it helps it to kind of flow into the cup a little bit more. Now the edges are very wonky, okay? I still have yet to cut and trim the edges to get them even, so don't worry about that. That, that will all be evened when I go to put it together. Okay, so both of these are still quite plastic. For my students, if you have time on the day that you do it, I would recommend taking a little rib. Remember that the ribs can get rid of some of the denting on this first day. Um, if you get rid of some of the denting, that means that you might have a little bit less to sure form off when it's leather hard. So the smoother you can get it on the first day, the easier cleanup will become. 
if you don't have time to do this step, it's not a huge deal because you can always sure form and rib it when it's a little bit stiffer. Right here, I'm going to rib the interior of this. This is also wider than I would leave it. I would uh, sure form that down a little bit so you can kind of see it's working like this, okay? Okay, so at the end of the first session, I have ribbed this. I've tried to make sure that it looks round in the middle. I wanna make sure that the cup top looks very, very round. You don't want it to be squished right now because it will have a funky shape for you. I'm going to gently set it upside down on a wear board, making sure it remains round. The stem, again, is round on the bottom. Again, I am going to make that a little bit thinner. This part is gonna be round. Now, I think I might be concerned to leave this fully uncovered because I don't want the stem part to get really dry, nor the bottom to get super dry. So I'm going to set a dry towel over it in the class damp cabinet for 24 hours. And then I'll show you when it gets leather hard, how we put it together and clean it. All right, so at this point, both of these uh, pieces that I did this morning are leather hard. Now. I'm going to be cleaning this using the same techniques that I have used previously with other pieces. I am using a sure form first. I'm going to be getting the level a little bit better. I like to use a turntable, that way I can spin it. Okay, all right. So I like the little straight sure form for leveling the edge, but in an area like this, this really won't fit. You can see there's a bit of a gap. So for something like that, if you have a concave kind of a curve, you can use one of the, um, the sure forms that are bent side to side. And again, the purpose of this is it's going to help get rid of just some denting and pull it in a diagonal fashion. So uh, I used it the same way before, with uh, the other applications, I always pull sure forms in a diagonal fashion as I bring it across. That helps you to get it uh, less faceted and a little bit more round and consistent. Now you can change up your direction and your angle if you want to. So here I'm just going to work on the bottom a little bit and I flipped it upside down so I could do that. Again, just trying to get rid of denting. Okay, next I'm going to get my head above it. I'm going to make sure that it looks round. And I'm just looking for areas that perhaps are sticking out that don't look entirely round. Now in here, it's optional whether or not I went to sure form. I could just say use something like a scraper and actually just scrape it a little bit rather than sure forming it because obviously I wouldn't be able to get down in that hole very far. So I'm getting my eyes down, level, looking across and looking for any bulging. Okay, now just like I've cleaned sure form marks on other projects, I use the mud tool ribs. Again, the mud tool ribs and all the other materials that I have here are going to be linked both in my Amazon Influencer storefront and in my Google Doc which is in the video description of my favorite tools that you can get on Amazon. 
using my affiliate links. Okay, so using the silver rib, I scrape away the shoreform marks. And I love these baby ribs because they kind of flex a little bit. Once you feel like you have all of the sure form marks out of there, then I'm going to go to the yellow rib and also flex the yellow rib around it. This helps to compress down the grog marks. If your clay is just a little bit drier, you could always dip the rib in water or add a little water with a, a paintbrush, a clay brush. Mine is just right though because it's compressing down the grog without leaving a lot of scratchy marks behind. Right here on the edge, I need to rib this. I clean off the edge of the rib frequently as I'm working. And then gradually, after it's smooth, then I go to the red rib. And that will do a lot of final compression. Again, clean the edge off. And then I am going to compress the rim with a little bit of water on my fingers, just like I would compress the upper part. I'm compressing the bottom edge as well. Okay, now we'll clean the top of the cup just like I would clean any pinch cup. Same way. Level the edge and then clean the sides. One of the keys with a pinch cup is making sure that the bottom actually appears in the middle and that the bottom appears round. You don't want something that looks really wonky and disfigured. A simple fix is turn it upside down, put it on a turntable, and sure form it. just going to do a quick comparison of size okay you can see the relative size for that it's a little bulky but it's a pinch cup okay I'm going to very carefully scrape the interior rim but I am supporting it on the outside notice that my hand is offering support so as I scrape it, I'm not going to crack the rim. My goal is to try to thin and round the rim after it's level. I did want to mention that one way that I have shown uh, before on how to sculpt an edge is to just take a card that's been notched, and I do have a video on how to do this, um, and you can drag it across. Now, the reason that I was choosing not to use this on this particular cup is the clay is still just a little on the soft side. So I normally only do that when it's not the least bit squishy, but I'm just a tiny bit squishy. So instead, I was just kind of sculpting it with the rib. Okay, 
Now to connect these onto here, I am going to slip and score, and I'm also going to add just a wee bit of a bevel to this because I want to get it to kind of fit down in there. And I am going to be adding a coil around the exterior. So that's looking pretty good. I put a little bevel on it so it fits down in there. Now I'm going to score and slip. I'm just using water, which is what I usually use in my classroom with my students. You could use prepared slip. You could use vinegar, lots of different options. I'm going to add some water. Okay, so when I attach this on here, I want to make sure that it is staying level. If I uh, want to add a coil on here, I could. Or maybe, maybe I'll just kind of compress this. And I'll leave this as a ridge. You can do it however you want. missed a spot there that I never noticed. It still had sure form marks on it, so I had to get that off. Now I'm going to dip my fingers in the water and compress. I don't use a sponge because the clay that I'm using is a grogged clay. And if you use a sponge, you'll remove the tinier particles and leave behind a big, heavy, groggy surface or texture. Plus, I usually don't like to wet down the rims a huge amount because if you do, they might be more prone to cracking if you uh, are adding so much water that things will shrink unevenly. In here, I'm just adding a little water with my fingers And there we go. That's a simple kind of a goblet shape. Uh, you could, you know, of course, make them larger, uh, you know, with a sh shorter, shorter stem, bigger bowl um, for like a goblet cha chalice water cup kind of kind of an idea. But this is hollow. And that is just the bottom of the cup. And there you go, that's how to make a two-piece goblet or chalice uh, hand building out of pinched clay. If you enjoyed it, I hope you can like and subscribe to my station for more videos on working in clay. Have fun!